The Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra's lunchtime matinee series, WSO at Home, features orchestra members and chamber concerts, mini recitals every second Friday. Today, two principals are the performers, cellist Yuri Hooger and bassoonist Katie Brooks, and they've both joined us. Hello. Hi. Hello. Great to have you both here. Great to connect digitally. Um, Yuri, I'd like to begin with you. Uh, it's been a while since you've been on the Classic 107 Airwaves. It's been a while since we spoke about music. What, mm -hmm. what have the past few months been like for you? Um, well, I mean, I think like for everyone, they've been difficult, uh, you know, and difficult. It's hard to be at home it's hard, all the time. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to be away from your colleagues, hard not to be making music um, with, uh, with people that you know and love. Um, but at the same time, there, there have been um, new opportunities that, that this particular uh, situation has, has forced on us, um, have forced on us, that things that we maybe don't normally consider anymore, like making music at home with your family. Um, so that's been going on at our house quite a bit, which has been really nice. Um, I think that's like for many, many people, many families, um, just the time together has been, has been really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about uh, finding a silver lining. Um, and, and, and Katie, what about, what about for you? What have, what have the past few months been like for you since everything went on pause? Yeah, I think, um, you know, some stuff has been difficult. Not being able to perform live frequently with like my whole group of colleagues has been very sad for me. I found like if I'm listening to orchestra music, um, sometimes I'll get overwhelmed with emotions and just be like, I want to be in there and playing with these people as well. And so I'm really looking forward to when we can go back and do that. Um, but a positive from it has been that I've really reconnected with my former teacher of the New York Philharmonic and we've been, we've collaborated Hmm. made a nice Mendelssohn Nocturne uh, quartet version together and we're gonna do another little I guess it's another quartet that we have coming up that we're gonna put together in August so that's been really fun reconnecting with her and then I've just been revisiting some old etudes and stuff like that to keep myself busy I've been watching like little challenges that on social media that different bassoonists are doing and one girl was celebrating that it was her 20 year anniversary of playing the bassoon so she was pulling out these short etudes that we like start with and just kind of getting through the 50 of them like faster so I was like oh cool like I'm gonna try that too and it's just been nice revisiting those I wouldn't have done that before um and even like being able to play this chamber music concert that we're going to be doing. Um, I'm not sure that Yuri and I would have found the time or opportunity to have been able to play this together during mm -hmm. our normal season. So that's a nice perk to this. Well, that segues nicely to my next question, because one thing that, you know, it's just great to hear that the music didn't stop for either of you and finding different ways to continue to make it work. But uh, what a great pairing, bassoon and cello. It just sounds so warm and, and velvety. Uh, Yuri, for you, is this, is this a combination that you, you've regularly uh, performed in? Well, yeah, actually every week, <laughs> uh, because uh, I mean, it's actually, it actually is a really natural uh, combination. Uh, when you think about it, we are, we're often playing each other's lines yeah, in the doubling, the orchestral, yeah. orchestral repertoire all the time. And so um, throughout my career, um, whenever the principal bassoonist and I, whenever Katie and I have stuff together, oftentimes you'll see us in, a, in a, a break or after rehearsal, just going over a couple of things just to make sure that we're playing closely in tune. We, of course, can't hear each other super clearly where we sit in the orchestra. Um, so it's good when we have a, have a chance to kind of um, just connect like at a break. But also, especially when we play Baroque music, um, that's a really great opportunity to, when we can play continuo together. So we play the bass line together and then we're usually sitting very close together and it's a lot of fun. Um, blending our, our colors and talking about articulations and because we, we don't often get a chance to, to think uh, in those terms or talk about those those things in our in our day-to-day -day, uh, life. Now of course it is very rare that you hear music 
for just the cello and the bassoon. <laughs> um, and so that's been a really lovely discovery. Um, although uh, I think both of us have played the Mozart before, it's just, but it's not a piece that gets played all that often. Um, yeah, and I guess that's exactly what I was getting at is that, you know, similar timbres in a way, and, and you mentioned the doubling of the lines and, and working through it together, but, but to, um, rather than being in a supporting role to turn the spotlight on both of you, uh, mm -hmm. Katie, this must've been a pretty exciting uh, undertaking. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was really fun. Um, like Yuri said, I played the uh, Mozart duo before, but that was in my undergraduate. So it's been a while since then. Um, it was really nice to be able to prepare this together. and We're really excited to play that for everybody. Um, but the new, I would say the challenging, more challenging part for me um, has been learning the Baccarini because it's actually written for two cellos or maybe a cello and bass. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just, it was, it's been really fun to like get together um, ensemble for me because there, it's just got more like freedom in it and everything. Um, so that's been a nice challenge to be able to prepare and get that together and just to learn a new piece for me as well. Um, well, the Mozart I know is a pretty beautiful piece of music, uh, utterly gorgeous. And it really showcases what the bassoon can do as, as well, right, Katie? Yeah, yeah, it does. Mozart definitely knew how to write for, I mean, he knew how to write for everybody. <laughs> um, and I think that he really knew how to feature um, the bassoon in a, at times in a solo way that it'll cut through and really stand out. Um, makes, I think his writing makes like balance pretty natural and, you know, easier to like get versus like, there are times when I feel like, oh, I could probably always play like softer to be under like interesting like solo stuff like Mozart just knew how to do that like he just he just naturally knew how to orchestrate even for two instruments mm -hmm. and then Yuri can you just tell us a little bit more about the Baccarini I, I I'm curious what, what was it like putting this one together well it's the first time I've ever played that this piece with bassoon but it, I think it works really well as I said before the bassoon and the cello both work well as continual instruments and the bassoon part in this version of this piece uh, is functioning as a continuo uh, instrument to the cello's more solo role here. Um, so Baccarini was the first real cello virtuoso uh, back in uh, sort of, he's a contemporary of Haydn, so the end of the 18th century. Um, I, here's a, I'm sitting in front of a picture of him there, <laughs> looking very dapper in his gigantic bow tie. Um, <laughs> this is always one of my favorite, my favorite pictures. Um, but as a young man, uh, he traveled all throughout Europe as a virtuoso and probably playing these, uh, he wrote about 24 sonatas for a combination of solo cello and, and, and a continue instrument. Probably it was usually his father accompanying him on the bass, um, but they work well with two cellos and they certainly work very well with uh, cello and bassoon as well. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a wonderful performance. Uh, that performance happening at 12.30 at noon today. Uh, Yuri, Katie, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us at Classic 107. My yeah, pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, it's been so good seeing you both. And uh, you can see them perform in your living room, wherever you happen to be. Uh, details up on the website, classic107.com. The Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra's WSO at Home Lunchtime Matinee Series today. <laughs>